In Moscow, another outburst from Soviet Premier Khrushchev. He again promises a communist utopia, declaring that by 1980, the Soviet Union will be the world's greatest industrial power. He backs down on his year-end deadline in the Berlin crisis, while to show his muscle announces Russia plans to test a 50 megaton atomic weapon, biggest in history. In Washington, the Voice of America broadcasts a call by the White House for Khrushchev to reconsider the giant blast citing the lack of military purpose and the mass of additional radioactive fallout. While world opinion is rallied against the Soviets' obvious move to frighten peoples and governments, Secretary of State Dean Rusk assesses Khrushchev's speech. He says the easing of the Berlin deadline may serve to reduce tension somewhat, but otherwise Russia's attitude shows little, if any, change. About the monster bomb, he says... Just why uh, the Soviet Union would wish to detonate a 50 megaton explosion, something about which we can all speculate. But um, if they have in mind it will be a demonstration, we hope that they will think very hard about all that it will demonstrate, and not just the particular point that they might wish to establish. We hope very much that we can move toward a test ban treaty just as promptly as possible. Also in Washington, Dr. Ralph Lapp, a top nuclear scientist, comments on the 50 megaton bomb, equivalent to 50 million tons of TNT. If the Soviets do test this monstrous weapon, then I think they will test it at night and in the Arctic. They have two choices. They can either detonate it in a drone bomber flying at high altitude or by means of a high altitude rocket. In either case, a very high altitude burst could illuminate 20 million square miles of the Earth's surface with a visible flash of light. Not necessarily damaging, but within about 700 miles of the light flash, people looking directly at this enormous explosion could suffer retinal burns. In terms of the fallout hazard, the local deposition of debris from the bomb would be eliminated by the high altitude test. But there is no means to prevent the strontium-90 from coming down all over the Earth's surface over a period of years.